Roid rage is a term that you've probably heard pretty often when referring to someone who seems aggressive or at least has a heightened attitude that might also look fit. And the history of rage that is fixated around steroid use is vast and I think also misled, but we're going to talk about all of that. And it starts with propaganda that was formed way, way early ago when there was those huge anti-drug movements where there was, you basically sat in the cafeteria of middle school. I mean, I went through these things. I don't know if you did, but certainly I did. And they played something on a projector and it was a brief almost like an infomercial or played out situation or role playing that was indicating what looked like someone your age or maybe a little bit older using some kind of drug whether it was steroids cocaine methamphetamines and then the implications of that usage i don't know if you guys remember but there is a great series uh back in the day of this kid using steroids in high school and like the aggression teetering up and him getting like suddenly just insane from using D-ball or something. It is funny as hell. Jimmy? Hey, Lloyd. I, I'm Jimmy. Uh. Jimmy, were you masturbating? And it's not necessarily an accurate depiction of what happens to bodybuilders, but is there some truth behind this matter? And you actually might be surprised because I think a lot of people still believe that rage is caused by androgens and murky at best. The research we have isn't great, but I think there is definitely some validity. But beyond this, there's a whole reason I'm bringing this up here today. Because I think many people who start taking androgens might think this would happen to them, the roid rage side of things, but also because many people in the community of steroid users also are often quite ragey. Bro, don't fucking play games. I will fucking go outside. And this is where Anthony Hu comes into this conversation. And recently, he had some events happen at one of my home gyms here in Thailand called Muscle Factory. You don't know this guy, and you certainly don't need to. The best way I could describe him is like a mid-tier bodybuilder competing in the MPC year after year, taking a bunch of ridiculous cycles, getting absolutely no progress kind of thing. You've definitely seen his type before all over in the industry. And before I dig deeper into this situation, I do want to express that he is being investigated by the authorities. Every single gym here in Thailand, both the Taya and Bangkok has completely disenabled him from coming to those gyms. He's furthermore banned from what I know, at least from talking to people around from most gyms in Thailand. If he gets to a gym, it's usually going to be one that's kind of disconnected in the scene, but we're going to roll it right now. So obviously I don't support this behavior. I think it's absolutely ludicrous and would love to kick this guy's ass as most of you probably would. But why did this happen? Is it the individual's nature at hand, Anthony being just an asshole who he is? Or is it the fact that this man is a bodybuilder likely taking a really shittily designed cycle and probably taking way too many things that he shouldn't be taking, getting results that are pretty much mid tier at best. What's going on here? If you're here just for my answer, I'm gonna give it to you straight. I don't think this was necessarily caused by androgens. I don't think that Andrew beats women because he takes steroids. I think it's actually because of who he is as a character and maybe his upbringing as a child. So if that's all you wanted to hear, skip to the next video, find something funner to watch. I'm gonna dig into some of the science. And yes, I said funner. So we're gonna go to the science of some of this and I, I'm gonna try to keep things super duper simple so that it is very understandable for anyone who picks up this video and watches it because it is a very important topic to discuss in a steroid user community. And in general, I think people who know people who use steroids or are bodybuilders actively should be aware of these things as well, because consequentially, an image is depicted about a person who does these things without them even desiring to have that image depicted about them or having any evidence to support them being the type of person that people would perceive them as knowing that they do some form of hormone. So first and foremost, it is known that hormones in some way stoke moods, and I don't say mediate or control or even make because it's not doing any of that. Hormones at large aren't making your mood. They aren't determining how you act. They aren't influencing your character in any way of being, but they stoke your emotions. And this is so important as an adjective. They are basically putting air into the campfire that is your predetermined emotion already. This is you being sad and then testosterone coming into play and then it makes you even more sad. It's not saying that a person who is slightly mad will now turn into a raging, abusive 
abusive maniac, but if someone who is already raging and has the tendencies to be an abusive maniac takes testosterone, it's very likely that it will stoke that little campfire and turn it into a blazing flame. Right after you eat this! In many studies, it's explained that most determining factors of what behaviors one tends to is completely parentally driven or in social dynamics, meaning how someone is developed as a child through their parental care as well as their social dynamics as a child really will determine most of their behavioral factors in life. In this case, it seems that testosterone or other androgens only seems to amplify what happened already in childhood and then the behaviors that that childhood had solidified into an individual. So maybe our friend here had a terrible upbringing to no fault of his own, but unfortunately his system or himself didn't take any action to correct the behaviors that basically ensued in his life because of what he went through as a younger individual or an adolescent. What is your problem? Just leave me alone. This then stormed into a awful mixture of emotions and aggressions and microaggressions as an adult toppled with using exogenous hormones at a very high level and probably not very intelligent cycle design either, leading to some neural cognitive decline. And maybe that improvement of rage and aggression led to the externalization of some of his internalized thoughts. But there is more to this story, I think. And it's really important to talk about the actual dynamics neurologically of testosterone and other key androgens in our system, as well as ones that we're injecting into our ass. Growing literature continues to this day to suggest that androgens in some fashion are correlated with aggression in humans. They certainly are in other mammals, and they certainly are in humans too. In fact, one study was done, which is really cool, where they applied transdermal testosterone onto the skin of male patients. In the study, they would have people looking at the patients with mean faces, polite faces, scared faces, and sad faces. And essentially, they had a double-blinded placebo-controlled trial where some of the patients, the male types, didn't apply the transdermal testosterone. They just simply applied applied a random gel, and then some of the other patients, of course, applied the transdermal testosterone, the dose of which was about 30 milligrams at that period in time, and then tested them about an hour later. What they found was essentially that the patients with higher serum levels of testosterone reacted more in concern to the facial expressions in front of them. And this was a really cool study because it wasn't outwardly said that they are perceivably seeing this person as a threat, but rather they looked at their brain and actually did MRIs to determine what brain areas were active in the moment and how they actually perceived it, then asked them what their thoughts were on the matter and what they thought during seeing that facial expression. And this is very contradictory as far as results go to some of the other studies that we know and kind of covet as bodybuilders. In fact, one study goes on to say, yet even with this, it does seem androgens cause an elevated threat response. Evidence on the relationship between androgen abuse and the involvement in aggressive behaviors seems to be mediated by cognition, neurobiology, personality, and polypharmacy as well as other methodological factors such as study design, aggression severity, type of measurement, and temporal proximity. Implications for practice and future research are presented and still need to be implemented for any accurate conclusion on whether androgens seem to mediate aggressions and criminality in androgen abusers. So this is a really cool study done because it was done on people who were using exogenous androgens in an abusive capacity and they were also studying a review actually of studies done on people using those androgens and their criminality as well as their past aggressions in criminal records based on those aggressions. And what they simply found was that based on averages in our society at large, males using exogenous hormones at very large doses didn't seem to have any aggression or irrational behaviors compared to the averages of males already. And I should say that they also included ethnic groups in this study so that the ethnicities, the gender and the ages were all determined factors and they compared them against the averages of the population at large with, of course, the people using the highest dose of androgens. Again, what they found was insignificant at best. Yet, again, even with this, it does seem that our study where transdermal testosterone was applied and they had males look at faces that were basically threat-promoting, that there was a negative response because essentially what had happened
happened to them, once the transdermal testosterone was applied, there was an increase in activity within the amygdala and specifically neurons in the cortical medial amygdala, which is a big, big influence in how we act emotionally. But you don't really need to understand those brain regions, but what you do need to understand is that that specific neuron activation isn't going to imply itself as, again, motion creation. It's not going to make a person act a type of way. It's not going to derive a brand new emotion from nothing. Simply put, these neurons don't change the state of the brain or your nervous system. However, it just makes it more sensitive to inherent threats already. So in the case of this study where they had males taking testosterone just before receiving an aggressive facial expression, normally a person getting a facial expression that doesn't look like a kind one and maybe a little bit threatening while you're walking across the street could seem a little dodgy at best and you might go to the other side of the street. But in the use of testosterone, the threat detection elevates much, much more in the amplitude of neuronal activity in the brain regions that would already be activated are even higher, therefore eliciting more perceived aggression towards an individual who does pose a threat. Now, what does this mean for you and me who are using androgens? Well, simply put, again, if we are exposing ourselves to something that is already known bad behaviors or stimuli to bad behaviors with exogenous hormones going into our system, we would then immediately become more of what we were already going to be. So let's just say one of my biggest things is when people raise their voices at me, specifically females, it triggers sort huh? of like an internal panic. If I'm on a high dose of androgens due to my childhood and that sort of stress response that I get, that response will definitely be worse and more amplified than it would be if it was just a normal setting with normal endogenous levels of hormones. So again, at the end of all of this, what I'm meaning to say is that testosterone or its other variants out there, dihydrotestosterone derivatives and 19 nor testosterone derivatives aren't going to implicitly cause aggression. However, if you are an aggressive person and your threat detection is skewed from some mishap in your childhood, military experience, whatever the case might be, you taking androgens could amplify those responses that are already innate to your character. In the case of our friend Anthony Hugh, I don't think he was taking the androgens and the androgens led him to get the result of mood disruption to a point of throwing a woman across the floor. I think that this man is just as he is naturally a woman abuser. And so the result of this being out in the community is you have someone who is just waiting until something happens, unfortunately, and then a poor victim like the one we saw in the video gets the brunt end of it. And that does seem to be what happened here. Of course, androgens would have elevated the situation and made his threat detection a lot higher to whatever the response or exchange was between them in the video, I just don't think that that was driven by androgens and the choice was made before he had even knew it was made. It was just a innate response to him as a human being. I hope this video was at least somewhat legible for the broad audience and that you could understand some of the terms and topics I was expressing. At the end of the day, I don't think androgens are going to cause mood disorders in the way that they think might in a lot of data out there, but they definitely are going to modulate the amplitude of moods that you're already experiencing. I hope that helped. If you did find interest in this video, I might check out some more of my videos because I do topics like this a lot as well. Like and comment down below. I'm curious what you think about this video and people who do stuff like this as well as at large if androgens ever have made you an asshole or someone who <laughs> considerably isn't a fun person to be around. But we'll see you in the next video.